you know, if you're not paying attention to those warning lights that come on, you know, that, those aren't decorations. Right. They're there. You know, sometimes batteries will have those lines and you can kind of see where it starts depleting, the energy starts depleting. Your body's the same way, your mind's the same way, but being able to recognize those early warning signs before you get depleted and move into burnout. Welcome to Metagagement, the HR show that dives deep into the heart of employee engagement and workplace culture. Your hosts, Anne Scotland and Dr. Lyman Montgomery, bring you a groundbreaking show that explores innovative strategies and insights to transform and elevate your organization's HR practices. Dr. Montgomery is an employee engagement expert and best-selling author, while Anne Scotland is an acclaimed business consultant and podcaster. Together, they will unpack the complexities of modern HR challenges and reveal innovative solutions that can be immediately applied to your workplace. Please welcome Anne Scotland and Dr. Lyman Montgomery. Hello and welcome, welcome back to Metagagement HR with Dr. Lyman Montgomery and myself, Anne Scotland. Hi, Lyman. Hello, how are you doing, my friend? I am great. I'm so excited to be here for all of our HR people out there who um, want to jump in with us today and talk about some really important things. Uh, in particular, a new and different look at burnout and engagement. This is like yes. this. This subject never goes away. How do you cure disengagement and burnout? And how can we go meta in doing that? How can we think outside the box? How can we take advantage of those things that are naturally occurring in our environment and our staff to make those transitions easier for sure? I mean, I can't tell you the number of times in my lifetime I've been burned out. What about you, Lyman? You know, I often say, do we burn out or get burned up? I crash. <laughs> 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 I'm like, it's, I'm one of those people yeah. who goes into overdrive. <laughs> yeah, just bad. And you know, that comes from, again, burning both ends. And then if that's not enough, we start burning the middle and there's nothing left. We've been stretched so thin till we reach a breaking point. And so there are a lot of people that are literally on the verge of burn up, burnout, and we continue to burn them. Is what some people call burn and turn. You know, we burn them up and then we look, we wonder why we have big turnover problems in the workplace. I like the the burnout versus burn up, um, you know, because you have to bring some humor to these conversations, right? Right, like, right. The burnout, we understand like the, um, well, what we've said before too, and I love visuals and I love history. I'm a nerd, you guys know for about history. So uh, the old fashioned candles, you could put a candle on a, on, a, on a stick that spins, right? Like on a nail or something. Mm -hmm. And the wick would be in both ends, the old homemade candles. You burn one until you get like halfway to the nail, then you just spin it over and burn the other side. So that's what we talk yeah. about, burning the candle for two ends. But what if you're burning out like a comet, a meteor? It's not yeah. just that the fire goes out, it's that you disappear. <laughs> and sometimes in my professional life that I have felt like I was about to disappear. Yeah. And you see that in Hollywood, you know, the industry that you're uh, very familiar with where you see the, you know, an actor that was very popular. And then, you know, you sit around and you say, wait a minute, whatever happened to so-and-so? And they interview him, you know, 15 years later and say, well, what happened? You was at the height of your career. And they say, man, I, I burned out. Yeah. Just like that comet. You know, they were a bright light flying through the sky. And all of a sudden they disappear. Which is so interesting that you brought that up because... I think that, um, you know, people have burnout, experienced burnout for very many different reasons. Uh, but sometimes burnout can just happen. Um, it doesn't for a lack of incentive. Mm -hmm. So some actors as other professionals burn out just because of lifestyle, circumstances, personal makeup, the whole thing. But also sometimes you see people press through You're like, well, if I was getting paid that money, I wouldn't burn out. <laughs> Well, there's that's we're all still human. I don't care how famous you are. There is a point at which incentive in, in the workplace or anywhere else no longer can force you into yes. overdrive and performance. At some point, if you're not taking care of yourself and your team, things just come to a stop. Yeah. And we see this time and time again. Uh, individuals 
that should have retired 10 years ago, but financially they can't. Mm -hmm. And they literally have nothing left in the tank. They don't take vacations. They don't take sick days. They just grind, grind, grind until they grind to a halt. And that's a sad situation to be in. And hopefully you have worked so hard for so long till now you just grind yourself into the ground. You know, and that's the thing, you know, because people will say working towards retirement, working towards this, working towards that. You know, if I just push harder, but that doesn't do any good to anyone if at 55 you just have a heart attack at work one day. You know, yeah. it's we think that we are somehow yeah. or the day you retire. Yeah, I'm going to say in the day you retire, you die. You know, yeah. you built all this energy, you know, working, grinding towards retirement. You know, my wife was sharing with me a story about uh, a co-worker of hers um, that always talked about, oh, when I retire, I'm going to travel the world. When I retire, I'm going to do A, B, and C. And I'm about, I think she said a month to three months after retirement. She had a massive heart attack and died. So she never got to live her life because all she knew was work and how to grind towards something that unfortunately, by the time she got there, she didn't get to live long enough to see the second phase of mm -hmm. her life because she grinds so much. I believe she much. grinds herself to the grave. And, and while there is personal choices and decisions involved in that, it does fall within, sorry, I just like <laughs> bumped everything here. It does uh, fall within purview of HR and the company to also, do you permit that? Do you permit people to, it's irresponsible use of resources to allow yeah. people to burn out, especially irrecoverably burn out. You know, we're not suggesting everyone run for the hills and, you know, John used to tease me, you know, during the recession and whatnot, and, and he, he got laid off from a big company. And it was just, you know, it was one of those things. It's like, I just gonna let's just move out into the country and have a peach orchard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, listen, I grew up on a ranch. Do you know how much work it is to grow anything, animals, food, <laughs> anything? Like, are you kidding me? There are 120 other things I would do before I did that. There you go. There you so go. We're not yeah. encouraging people to run to the hills uh, and leave their jobs, but we're rather encouraging companies to um, to get in engaged. It's the word with yes. with your people yes. and yes. and bring health and well being. The company's legacy is not just the bottom line. It's also if you're responsible. It's like being responsible with the environment. Well, human beings are part of the environment, and how you are responsible with that resource is just as important. Yeah, and you know, and, and you bring up a very good point. And that is, we talk about running to the hills. No, we don't want you to run to the hills. We want you to run to meta wellness, a new way of thinking about wellness. You know, the cure, the real cure to disengagement and burnout is meta wellness. What does that look like? What does that feel like? And that's an individual. It's the out of the box experience. It's saying, you know what? I've been working hard. It's okay for me to take some time off to reconnect, to re-energize, to refocus my focus because mm -hmm. I've lost my focus because I'm so busy taking care of everyone. And this is actually dedicated to HR professionals because they are the ones that silently are burned out but they feel like they have to show up for everyone in the workplace. But who is there to take care of HR when they burn out? Oh, we, we could do a whole three-part workshop on that. And I think it could actually be a lot of fun. I think that would be extremely popular. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes I agree with you. Taking care of you, that's a huge question. And you know uh, let's do it. Let's do it. Yes, I would love that. I mean, you know, I, I always just I grew up in a very wellness driven family. So that's yes. um, part of my second nature and experience as well. But, you know, how do we take care of ourselves? Who do we know we can go to? Who do we know has our back and all those things that are, are super, super important and in HR? When you're having to bring a cure to a thousand problems that were not of your own making, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, what happens when you need some support yourself. So such yeah, good, yeah. good, 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 great question. Especially those that are in employer relations where your job is to defuse, to uh, mitigate, to investigate, as well as to uh, figure out a way of helping employees solve their problems. Mm -hmm. That is can be that can that can be very stressful. It can be overwhelming at times. Where all you're hearing is problem after problem after problem, and people are looking to you for the solution. Mm -hmm. There's a there's something I was just researching the other day. It's um, I'll see if I get this right, but basically, uh, it's called compassion exhaustion. When people are more specifically working with humans and people in hospice or working with animals in dire situations and trying to rescue yes. recovery situations, you're, you, can, you can actually become, it's called compassion fatigue. And there's even a, a, a kind of therapy that addresses compassion fatigue. <laughs> Whoa, cannot say that. Compassion fatigue. But I was really impressed because like that is such an important thing to understand it because is, I think, well, we don't typically think of, you know, HR as being a compassion industry, you know, we're not like the medical and emotional nurturers of, of people and animals. We are really there. It's HR is kind of like being that the older brother, the sister, the parent, the family <laughs> member who keeps the whole unit going and it can be exhausting. It really can. It really can. And not only that, but if you're dealing with problems, no different than if you are a um, first responder and you're dealing with problems after problems after problems, mm -hmm. by the time you get home and you're met at the door with, you can't believe what little Johnny did. All you want to do is just mm -hmm. sit in a recliner, sofa, and just become a veggie. You don't even have any more brain cells to deal with a problem. And you see this often, where it's like, I don't understand. You deal with problems every day, and you come home and can't even figure out how to tie your shoe. What's wrong with you? They're, they're exhausted. Well, I'll do, the, I'll do the, the woman and mom version of that, which is kick off your heels, take <laughs> off your miserable clothes that you wore all day, go into the bathroom, lock the door, take a bubble bath with your favorite beverage, yes. and just lock everybody out. That's what I do now. <laughs> what, what's that old commercial, cow gone, take me away? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, no, but so true. When you have nothing left for yourself or others, and we all know that we can't run on empty. Um, one of the hidden benefits of the tragedy that was the entire COVID epidemic was really for people to understand many for the first time how important mm -hmm. mental and emotional well-being is that burnout is not a wimp out no Ooh, <laughs> that, that's good <laughs> right that it is human to experience fatigue in all levels of yourself and, and for those of you who have come to our events or watched others other workshops of ours online we, we talk about the four quadrants uh, of the human, uh, whether that's physical, emotional, spiritual, professional, whatever those are, the quadrants that interact. And if you're absolutely burned out in one, the whole thing is out, out of sync, right? Yes. So uh, learning how important that balance is and then finding a way to, you know, if nothing else in HR, I always say, there's nothing like living by example. That is so the best true. thing you can possibly so do um, because the employees don't expect you to live by example. <laughs> they expect what they they saw growing up most of their life, which was people mm -hmm. telling them what to do, but who didn't keep their own rules. Yes. Or who didn't live a standard of what was important about well-being overall and not and how it affects your productivity at work. So living by example is such a powerful element and, and getting in the trenches with people too, to understand burnout is different. So different in different kinds of job descriptions. Yeah. And you also have this phenomenon uh, where people not just are burned out, but they are literally dead on arrival. And what I mean by that is they're almost like zombies. Uh, you see them sitting at the customer service desk 
and they have this sort of blank stare. They're just there. There's nothing alive about them. You ask them a question and they just point. I never forget I was at a um a hardware, very famous uh hardware chain. And I went up to the desk and the person was sitting on a stool and I said, Where can I find a screen to replace, you know, a, a window screen? And the person didn't even look up. They just literally pointed and said, I'll eat. And went right back. I mean, no eye contact. You could tell that person was dead on arrival. <laughs> and, 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 and it was like, wow. Oh it's just like a zombie. So, so let's talk about what, when we come back, we're going to take a break here in a moment. When we come back, we're going to talk about what makes um, going meta different in helping you cure disengagement and burnout in helping cure disengagement from reducing burnout overall yeah. on your, on your work, on your team, in your team, in your company and, and what it means to go different. How do we use things like neuroscience um, to do things differently than they've been done before? And how do we apply that to practical steps that can help us individually as HR professionals and also our teams um, transform that environment that we have to work in every day. So while you are here, and as we take this short break, please do like, please subscribe, please send us your comments. Tell us how you like the show. We appreciate any everyone who's been sending messages and emails. You can also email us directly. Just pop over to the website, metagagement.com. Uh, you can shoot us a message from there or in on whatever platform you're watching today. We would absolutely love to hear from you. And if you know someone else in HR or just in business in general who would like really to learn more about going meta, about what burnout means and how you can come at it from a different approach, shoot them the link to the show. Uh, if we're still streaming live, they'll have, they'll jump in where we are. And if it's after we finish, that same link will take them there. So we'll be right back. Um, can't wait to talk to you more about this topic. Thanks and see you in a moment. Are you ready to elevate your team and organizational effectiveness? Dive into the focused Meta Mindset 5 Persona Types Architecture Assessment and discover your unique superpower as a leader or team member. Whether you're a fearless cheerleader, diligent construction worker, calculating chess player, commanding commander, or analytical chemist, this journey of self-discovery will highlight your strengths, sharpen your focus, and propel you towards success. This isn't just a quiz, it's your pathway to unlocking and embracing the potential that will transform your organization. Ready to find out your persona type? Head over to metagagement.com to take the assessment now. All right, welcome, welcome back to Metagagement HR, the show that's made for the HR professional. We are in your court, we are listening to you, we are listening to your challenges, and we are looking for outcomes that you tell us are the most important of all in your current situation, both trending all across the country and the world, but also in your own company. So thank you for joining us here today. Again, please like and subscribe, send us a comment or a message. We're talking today about something that is a topic that some people think is overdone, which is burnout, uh, only because we got burned out of talking about burnout over COVID, I think. <laughs> but it didn't make burnout go away because now that everyone is fully, made, you know, most people are back to work, we're already going right back to the same old patterns we had before and um, trying to find ways to keep our employees and keep our teams from disengaging. So Lima, um, let's talk a little bit more about what it means to go meta and how can we bring tools of neuroscience to the practical application of fighting disengagement and burnout? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we first have to diagnose the problem. And what research have shown us is that approximately 60% of most employees that wake up in the morning, drive to a job, that they are disengaged from the work. What that means is they are just basically there, but mentally they check out. 18% are what we call actively disengaged. These are the ones that are vocal. These are the ones that say, I hate my job. I hate my boss. 
the only reason I'm here is because of the benefits, or the only reason I stay here is I have three, five, ten years before retirement, and I'm out of here, and I would never come back to this place. You also have, and this is alarming to me, 25% and of the average workforce is burned out. These are individuals that they have nothing left to give. And some unfortunately are clinically burned out that they are at the point of near exhaustion. You mentioned going home and just flopping down or passing out. Uh, they are literally saying, you know what, I'm spent. Uh, I don't, I don't have a new idea. I have nothing. I'm just basically here to get a paycheck. The well, sad you know, commentary is 70% of all so-called employee engagement plans fail. Hmm. That's the problem. That's a huge problem. 75% too. It always astonishes me because it just seems with all the effort that's put in, why does that happen and why are those numbers so high? And, and yeah. with regard to burnout, you know, especially in HR, and we just talked a few minutes ago about the HR professionals, you all yourselves and how we can help and support you in that. Um, but we'll, we'll talk sp for a moment here specifically about your teams. Um, I think like many things that we see happen in HR, <laughs> uh, addressing burnout is usually like, we wait for the fire before we buy a fire extinguisher. <laughs> yes, yes. That's a very good point. And now we're scurrying around saying, you got a bucket, you, you got a water <laughs> hose. <laughs> because we yeah. didn't anticipate. We didn't well, anticipate. And you didn't watch the signs. You didn't yes. watch for the dry materials near a flame, right? You know, that could we could have a hundred examples of that um, in, in a workplace environment. What that could be, you didn't watch for the first sparks. You didn't watch for the signs of smoke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm making a comic book in my head right now, doing this, and I'm having like the old fashioned <laughs> cubicle and smoke coming out of it. Yeah, <laughs> you didn't even notice when there was smoke coming out, right? So, were you watching the signs? Um, do you have your? Do you have you know a grasp on the pulse of? your each employee in their environment, or at least the ones that you're directly responsible for. And, and how can you intervene before it gets too late? And sometimes it's not just work. A lot of work burnout is a side effect, can be a side effect of experiences that are brought in from home. Physical exhaustion, so new, so new baby in the family, um, an elderly person or family member who's ill, uh, money trouble, a million other things. So how in HR, how do we engage without being too pushy? How do we find how we can be supportive? Um, give us an example of, of, you know, what is a way to go meta by using our instinct, which is what meta is all about, instinct, intuition, observation, to, um, to get in on this before it becomes too late. Yeah. And this is part of a four part series. The first thing, and, and, and I, boy, we're running out of time here, so I'll, I'll move quickly. The first thing is you have to believe that it's possible to recover. I have watched literally thousands over the years, HR professionals literally say to me, and I don't believe I can recover. Hmm. And, there, and that's the person that is literally chronically burned out that they can't even see a way forward. And so the first thing is, if you don't believe it's possible for it to turn around, for it to change, for it to get better, how in the world are you going to be able to communicate to others that things can get better? Yeah. Let me share, there's three things I think with that believe is possible that a person can do in not only to believe, but start small. Instead of trying to take on something big, it might be something as small as, I don't feel like working on another committee. But you say to yourself, you know what? Maybe I just do one thing 
and focus on that one thing. And once I'm done with that, I'm done. So start small. The reason that a lot of people burn out is they take on too much. And they're being pulled in 50 different directions. Mm -hmm. And they feel like they have to answer everybody. So sometimes, which is number two, welcome saying no. I'm sorry, my plate is full. I would love to help, but I just really don't have the time nor the resources to be on another committee. And finally, it's okay to walk away and take respite or take a break. So number one, believe that it's possible. Number two, embrace saying no. Let no be your, my wife says, no is a full and complete sentence by itself. <laughs> and number three, it's okay to take a break. Even if that break is, you know what? I need to go outside, take my shoes off, and just get grounded to the earth. It might mean, you know what? I'm taking an extended lunch break. I need to go to the spa. But you have to do something small to reconnect. It starts there. Yes, absolutely. The individual starts there. So I think helping create awareness um, in your team and among employees of, of, of what they need personally. And, you know, that can be a challenge sometimes, too, because it can also get out of hand. I mean, we do yeah. still have to work. So, <laughs> like, you can't be having a, a sick day every day or a personal day every day. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> um, exactly. Well, you know, I've seen it. So, like, how, you know, you, how do you find um that balance and and that's where i think you know having extended resources when you treat your employees your team members as a full human and i think we're definitely going to bring into this uh, four-part series um our tool with the four quadrants right yes, like we're going to bring you back absolutely. in because you have to address all parts of the human being and uh if you notice that one is failing how can you support them how can you at least shore up the other three to mm -hmm. keep floating right so what can you do to, to help you can't always prevent burnout you can't always prevent what's going on in someone's home life uh but you can try to shore up the other the other areas by being observant by being uh you know people don't like that word intuitive so i say be observe be very observant that's really all it is yeah really listen watch um experience what people are saying, look for the subtext. You know, we talked about that when I was, mm -hmm. you know, as well, I was always looking for the subtext. Like someone's has this great smile on their face and they're going through the day like this. But if you really feel them, if you really think about it, you can tell that they're actually covering something. Um, they're, they're kind of being the clown as a way to get by. They could be completely burned out underneath. Like, why are they clowning more than usual? Maybe it's because they're yeah. just happy and yeah. celebrating, or maybe it's just the, a coping mechanism. And you start to recognize those coping mechanisms earlier and earlier where you can, you know, have a conversation and make sure they have the support and the tools they need. So um, we are here today on Metagagement talking again about how do we fight disengagement? And part of disengagement, obviously, uh, that we deal with on a regular basis is burnout. So we would love to hear some of your questions and comments about Burnout. What are some of your personal experiences as an HR professional or just in business? How have you, when have you found challenges either in your own experience and even more, not to the exclusion of your own experience, uh, with the people around you where you didn't know how to um, get involved early enough mm -hmm. to prevent the crash? I'm going with the meteor example again. <laughs> it's not just burning yeah. out of the candle. It's complete and utter combustion. It's gone, right? <laughs> they they left. They're no longer doing their job. They've left the company. Like they're completely gone. And how do you intercept that soon enough? Yes. Yeah. And, and how did you bounce back? You want to know, you know, share, you know, what strategies. Uh, maybe it was a conversation that you had. Maybe you had to seek professional help, whether that be uh, a counselor, a mentor, a coach, or a therapist. We want to know how did you bounce back from burnout and yes. fatigue. And um, in the next three uh, three parts of this four part series on uh, curing disengagement and burnout, we are going to talk more and more about neuroscience and how that brings a very unique edge to the conversation. 
Uh, we're also going to bring in some of the tools that we have created here at MetaGagement um, to demonstrate actionable steps you can take, like applying the four quadrants to a burnout scenario, for example, which will give you an endless amount of um, information and many ways. I can't do the math on that, but you can, my chemist friends. Uh, how many how many different combinations of that tool can you use in order to solve a problem? Um, so we're so grateful that you're here with us here today. And um, please like, subscribe. We're going to come back with so much more. This was just the tip of the iceberg. And we look forward to your questions and comments so that we can get you involved directly in this conversation. Uh, any final comments, Lyman, on engagement before we go? Yeah, you know, in our now. next segment, uh, next we're going to talk about listening to your energy. What do we mean by that? You know, all of us, think of your body, your mind as a battery. And sometimes when people suffer with burnout, it's equivalent to those energy cells being drained. But before you got there, you ever notice like a flashlight or something before the battery's going to start flickering a little bit before it actually goes dead? But if you don't pay it's attention. A Tesla like this, if it's a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not sure. You know, if you're not paying attention to those warning lights that come on, you know, that, those aren't decorations. <laughs> right. They're there. You know, sometimes batteries will have those lines. And you can kind of see where it starts depleting, the energy starts depleting. You, your body's the same way, your mind's the same way, but being able to recognize those early warning signs before you get depleted and move into burnout. So that's what we're going to talk about uh, next time how to listen. And we're not talking about listening with your ears, but how to really intuitively feel when your energy level has dropped to the point to where you are near exhaustion, fatigue, and ultimately burnout. Mm -hmm. Because it's not gonna help you, your company, or anyone else in your life when you are running on absolute empty. Uh, so we are going to have some fun. We're going to bring some fun to burnout. Ooh, yes. I didn't know we were going to say that. We're going to bring some fun to burnout in these next episodes, bringing you real um, actionable tools that you can immediately begin to use, yes. bringing you more neuroscience and, and showing you what it means to go meta and addressing these issues that we've outlined today. So um, as always, please um, send us a message, like, subscribe, shoot this link to someone you like who yes. could use a little pick me up and uh, an introduction on burnout and the, and the episodes that are following. And um, we stream every every week, Tuesdays, that's at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. GMT for our friends across the pond. And, uh, you know, next time we're going to talk about how do you listen to your own energy levels? And it's not just your caffeinated level, right, Lyman? <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> so join us then. We really look forward to it. Thank you for joining us here today on the show that's created specifically for you, the HR professional. Uh, thanks again from Dr. Montgomery and myself. And we'll see you again next time. Thanks. Bye. Goodbye.